We all love to travel, but there are some things that you just don't want to see while exploring the world. One of those things is a terrifying person running at you with a spear or a poisoned tipped dart or a terrifying mask. Well, strap in, because there are apparently a lot of those in the world. From a hostile group of isolated Indian islands to a tiny community in the Philippines, here are the 15 scariest tribes you don't want to meet. <sighs> Number 15. Sentinelese Tribe You may not know an awful lot about the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, but let me tell you the most important point. These islands are home to several communities of native and often reclusive indigenous people. These Sentinelese are just one of them. The Sentinelese people live on North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal, India. But unlike other nearby tribes, these Sentinelese people have continued to refuse any interactions with the outside world. In fact, they're so determined to keep outsiders away that they're known to be hostile and have killed those who have landed or even approached the island. Even if you get killed, nothing will be done about it, as these people are designated as a particularly vulnerable tribal group. Meaning that the nearby governments are determined to protect them. So, if you didn't already know, don't go venturing onto any strange islands anytime soon. What makes this tribe even scarier is that nobody knows exactly how many people are a part of it. Estimates range anywhere from 15 to 500 individuals, but the real count is anybody's guess. Because of the continued intrusion, the tribe operates a constant armed patrol to prevent unwanted guests. Photography is also prohibited, but I think you figured that out too. Generally, people who kill outsiders don't want photographic evidence of it. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The Batak People in the northeastern part of Palawan in the Philippines lives a small group of indigenous peoples. There aren't many of them, but the population isn't really the thing to focus on here. Since ancient times, the Batak tribe has existed, and their way of life hasn't really changed all that much. Since ancient times, the Batak tribe has lived in a series of river valleys along Puerto Princess City's coastline. According to a 1990 census, only around 450 Batak peoples remain. But given Given that this census was taken 30 years ago, that's almost definitely not accurate. At one time, the Batak were nomadic people, but the local government pressured them into settling in small villages. Today, the Batak live a hunting-gathering lifestyle, with some farming and trading when necessary. They have been known to trade natural and forest goods in exchange for manufactured products, but what specifically those items are is anyone's guess. I'm guessing it's probably not Oreos. It's known that the Batak are struggling against the consequences of dwindling forest resources. An increase in mining nearby is making it much harder to survive in a natural environment, making this community even more desperate. And potentially dangerous. Unless you have Oreos, maybe? So we'll never know. Number 13. Fury Tribe of all the tribes in the world, the Suri tribe is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating, thanks to their unique belief system. While other tribes are happy to simply maintain their ancient traditions, the Suri people just want to please their deity. And yeah, it's as unusual as you would think. The Suri people live with a traditional belief system, honoring a supreme sky deity named Tumu. However, this is not a religion or a cult. The only way that the Suri people can contact Tumu is through a mediator, known as Komoru, who is allegedly seen as the bridge that brings rain and fertility to the community. And it seems that, generally speaking, it works. There are around 34,000 Suri people in the southwest of Ethiopia, making this one of the largest tribes on our list. But they certainly have their dangers. The Suri people have been known to have violent clashes with neighboring peoples, nearby highlanders, and government officials, who consider the Suri to be uncivilized lowlanders. And 
And I think it's fair to say that even those of us who are none of those things should probably keep our distance. I don't imagine Tumu would mind if we were, uh, you know, eliminated. Number 12. The Slala Tribe the Dislala tribe, also known as the Corubo or Corubu, are an indigenous people of Brazil, and yet there's very little known about them. In fact, most of what the outside world knows about them is based on the research of one Brazilian explorer, Sidney Poisselo, and honestly, that's enough to be scared of them. In October 1996, Poisselo contacted the tribe for the first time. Today, almost 30 years later, the Dislala people are some of the last people on Earth living in near isolation from modern society. This community has no known spiritual or religious practices, but they have had violent run-ins with surrounding communities, and when I say violent, that's a pretty accurate description. <laughs> the Dislala people's weapon of choice is a club, but they're also known to use poison darts to take out intruders or otherwise unwelcomed visitors, so I guess you should be extremely careful if you find yourself exploring the Amazon basin in Brazil. It's not totally known how many people actually belong to the Dislala tribe, but it is known that one woman got so upset with things that she started a splinter group. It's estimated that this splinter group has around 23 members, which is pretty good, all things considered. Number 11. Kujarenyo Tribe if you take anything from this video, it's that there are a lot of indigenous tribes living in the Amazon rainforest. The Kujarenyo tribe, also known as the Masco Piro, are a tribe of nomadic hunter-gatherers who actively avoid encountering non-native peoples. So, probably something to be just slightly alarmed about. When most of the tribe was slaughtered by a private army in 1894, the Kujarenyo tribe retreated to the remote security of the Amazon rainforest. By the 21st century, Sightings of the tribe's people became very common, though capturing photographs or other reported media was much trickier. The Kujarenyo do everything they can to avoid even encountering people who are not part of the native environment. However, when they do happen to encounter somebody from the outside world, it often doesn't end well. Several people have been found with bamboo-tipped arrows poking out of their chest, a direct result of a poor encounter with the Kujarenyo tribe. Thankfully, these kinds of encounters are very rare. The local Peruvian government has banned contact with the Mashko Piros, citing the risks that strangers with diseases could potentially infect the tribe's people who have not built up immunity. And also because, you know, outsiders haven't built up an immunity to bamboo-tipped arrows. Number 10. Akansu Tribe and once again, we return to the wilds of Brazil, where the Akunsu tribe have made their home. Sadly, the Akunsu tribe is one of the smallest tribes in the world due to some unfortunate events. And that means, uh, well, they're ready to protect themselves. In the 1980s, Brazilian cattle ranchers perpetrated a brutal massacre that killed many, if not almost all, of the members of the tribe. Today, there are only four individuals left in the tribe, meaning that it's likely the language and culture of the Akunsu people will die out very soon. As far as we know, the Akunsu go out of their way to avoid contact with the outside world, but that's no guarantee. If you happen to encounter or startle one, you may not escape with your life intact. Still, you might make a new friend, so at least something good will come out of it, I guess. Historically, the Akunsu have had violent confrontations with everyone, from white colonialists to armed cattle ranchers. So it's fair to say that these guys have truly fought for their lifestyle, and in that case, maybe it is a good idea to stay away, if only for your own safety. I mean, if they took on armed cattle ranchers, I imagine a tourist with a camera is uh, small fry. Number 9. Mercy Tribe the Mirsi tribe, or Mun, as they often call themselves, are a pretty big tribe that lives in Ethiopia. Most of these tribesmen live in the Debub Omo zone, close to the South Sudan border. And they have a culture that is so fascinating and unique that it has to be seen to be believed. According to the 2007 Natural Census, there are 11,500 Mirsi living in Ethiopia. The Mirsi's home is one of the most isolated regions of the entire country, surrounded by many other African tribes. That close proximity to outside tribes obviously lends itself to a certain amount of 
tension, with some conflicts erupting. In fact, it's the job of a priest or shaman, known as the Komoro, to communicate with the sacred sky god known as Tumwi. Tumwi will help protect the tribe against attacks from surrounding communities. Or so it's said, I think it's likely that there are still many conflicts that erupt regardless of any assistance from Tamui. The Mirzi tribe may not make themselves too well known to the outside world, but their lively culture is undeniably pretty fascinating. And while they're not generally known to be aggressive, it's still probably a good idea to avoid wandering into their home. Then again, that's probably good advice for anybody's home. Number 8. Mokin Tribe if you've ever been to the Mergui Archipelago, let me fill you in on what it is. It's a group of around 800 islands claimed by both Burma and Thailand. That's about it. But on those islands live the Mokan tribe, a unique community whose existence is heavily based on the sea. There are around 2,000 to 3,000 individuals who make up the whole of the Mokan tribe. Most of them are believed to live in a kind of semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Thanks to the fact that they live on a series of islands, their lifestyle is heavily based on the seas. Or it was, thanks to the rapidly changing nature of our planet's oceans, that is increasing a threat. Some of the Mokan people continue to roam the sea for their entire lives, while others prefer to stay on land. Regardless of their preference, both Thailand and Burma have attempted to assimilate the Mokan into their wider regional culture, to no success. Today, the Mokan find themselves in an unusual and uncertain situation. With population numbers decreasing, maritime regulation and borders tightening, the Mokan's future looks bleak. So if I were you, I'd think twice before booking a vacation in the Mergui Archipelago. Number 7. Chimbu Tribe if you ever find yourself in the central highlands of Papua New Guinea, you might want to prepare to make some new friends in the form of the Chimbu tribe. This small community has made their home in the rugged mountains, and, well, it's interesting. The Chimbu tribe lifestyle is unlike any other. The inhabitants live in dispersed settlements as opposed to villages. Their traditions include large ceremonies in which pigs are sacrificed, huge headdresses are made with feathers of birds of paradise, and a unique method of staying warm that includes smearing your body with pig's fat. So what happens if you accidentally wander into their home? You'll probably be pretty scared since this tribe prides itself on body ornamentation as a means of intimidation. But if you happen to continue, regardless, uh, well, I can't promise that it will end well for you. So if you want to take that risk, be my guest. Thankfully, the Chimbu tribe's hard-to-navigate environment means that very few people, if any, will ever find themselves face-to-face -face with these most unusual people. And it's worth noting that we didn't even cover the unusual marriage ceremony known as Bride Price, which is actually pretty much what it sounds like. It's no uno, I can tell you that. Number 6. Horaway Tribe we're headed back to Papua New Guinea now to meet another local tribe with an interesting way of life. The Korowai tribe is a group of around 3,000 who live in southeastern West Papua. And until the 1970s, they didn't even know anybody else existed on this planet. Oh, to live in that life, eh? In the 1970s, the Korowai people encountered their very first outside human when a group of anthropologists embarked on a study of their lifestyle. This was the first clue they had. They were not the only people on this planet. A decade later, some of the Korowai clans began moving into nearby villages, starting a slightly more modern lifestyle. And by slightly, I really do mean slightly. The Korowai are passionate about paying reverence to their gods, sacrificing pigs in honor of their ancestors, and telling myths and folk tales to anybody who will listen. Sounds just like you and your friends, doesn't it? The Korowai tribe is a fascinating bunch to study, not least because of their strange quirks. For instance, they smoke tobacco, but they won't drink. What's all that about? I have absolutely no idea, but trust me, I'm not about to venture into the Papua New Guinea wilderness to find out. Number 5. Mudman Tribe 
far be it for me to assume what you may be thinking, but you're probably asking how do you get a name like the Mudman tribe? Well, we have an answer for you. It's basically just because they wear masks made of mud. Look, I never said it was a groundbreaking answer. The Mudmen are actually a small part of a larger tribe, the Asaro tribe. In Papua New Guinea, these tribesmen wear a traditional costume that centers around masks made of mud. Hence, the name. Although I think you already figured that one out. The history of this most unique tribe, however, that's up for debate. According to one anthropologist, there are as many versions of the legend as there are sources, so it's likely we'll never actually know the true origin of the tribe. What we do know, however, is that you probably don't want to bump into a tribesman wearing one of these masks when you get lost in the Papua New Guinea wilderness. That's a terrifying experience. Look, I can't sit here and say for sure that the mudmen are dangerous or violent, but I can say that they are scary as all heck. Or maybe the masks are scary as all heck? Either way, I don't want to bump into one of those guys on a dark night. Maybe Halloween, but even then I'm not going to be happy about it. Number 4. Chukchi Tribe the Chukchi people go by many names. Well, they go by two names, but since I only go by one name, anything more than one is many to me. The Chukchi, or Luora Wetland, people inhabit part of Siberia, and they're pretty fascinating, honestly. In the late 20th century, there were around 14,000 Chukchi divided into two subgroups, Reindeer Chukchi and Maritime Chukchi. There's not much difference between the two groups other than their geographical location. In fact, the only major difference is that the reindeer Chukchi live off of, uh, you guessed it, reindeer, while the maritime Chukchi live by hunting and consuming Arctic sea mammals. But while neither of them are particularly interested in attacking, maiming, or murdering humans doesn't mean that you're totally out of the woods just yet. The Chukchi are one of the only tribes in Russia to have never been conquered by Russian troops. Despite the amped destruction by Russian forces, the tribe managed to survive against all Lots. Today, the Chukchi continue to enjoy their traditional and time-honored lifestyle, but given their love of sacrificing animals for celebratory purposes, you never know what could happen. Of course, if you're not a reindeer or a marine animal, you might have something of an advantage here. Number 3. The Night Marchers Okay, so this one is more of an urban legend, but you know, urban legends totally count as tribes you'd never want to meet. Because, well, if the name Night Marchers isn't enough to tell you that something sinister is going on here, I don't really know what is. According to the ancient Hawaiian legend, the Night Marchers are the deadly ghosts of ancient, deceased Hawaiian warriors. The legend goes that on the nights honoring the Hawaiian gods, the ghosts rise up from their burial sites and march in a large group to sacred locations or ancient Hawaiian battle sites. The Night Marchers are apparently normal-sized warriors, all dressed for battle and carrying spears, clubs, war drums, or other sound tools. Oh, and they're also suspended in the air. Maybe I forgot to mention that, but I'm pretty sure that an army of floating military ghosts is more than enough to terrify even the bravest ghost seekers. The Hawaiian people believe that any human who happens to look at the Marchers will suffer violent and brutal death. But is that true? Well, we have no idea because the only people who could tell us have, uh, you know, died. So to sum it up, we don't know if they exist and we're scared to find out. We're just going to chalk this one up as one of those good lord no thanks kind of situations. Number 2. A Gory Tribe the Aghori tribe is an Indian tribe that have their own interpretation of the Hindu religion. And that, surprisingly, doesn't go down so well with strict orthodox Hindus, but, you know, that's just how tribes tend to be. Their extreme ritual practices are just part of their charm, probably. The Aghori practices are often considered to run contrary to the rules of Orthodox Hinduism. In fact, I'm pretty sure that these practices run contrary to, uh, 
well, every religion, or just every rational, non-psychopathic human being, you see the Agori have an unusual obsession with death and corpses. Not only do they like to use the skulls and bones of the deceased to produce new things, but they also… eat? the human flesh. I think that's pretty much all I need to say on that. If you're not terrified of a cult that's willing to eat human flesh, you may not be an actual human. In which case, uh, well, it sure makes sense. The Agori tribe is easily one of the most terrifying of all tribes. I mean, sure, screaming to some kind of a sky god is one thing, but these guys are literally eating human flesh. That's like horror movie territory. Number one. The Cargo Cult Ha, uh, the Cargo Cult. Actually, this is another slightly misleading one, because the Cargo Cult is not a specific cult. It's actually a collective name for any primitive society that reveres the goods of first world countries as some kind of spiritual gifts. Cargo cults are a unique kind of tribe. This is not your average worship the DD kind of community we're all talking about here. For instance, the tribe of Tana worshipped the late Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, as a divine being. And who are we to tell them that they're wrong? In fact, the island of Tana seems to be something of a hotspot for cargo cults. Many members of the John Frum movement worship an American serviceman named John Frum. Why, you may be asking? Who the heck knows, but annual celebrations are held every February 15th, John Frum Day. Those participating believe that by raising the American flag and building makeshift landing strips, John Frum will return with more cargo. So far, inconclusive. It's not that these cargo cults are dangerous, they're just really intense and passionate. And that can be kinda weird when you're dealing with a bunch of junk that fell out of a plane. But maybe some people really want to honor that warmed over salmon and flight meal. Which of these tribes would you least like to encounter? Let us know in the comments. Also check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.